carbon monoxide alarm has given up the ghost. It's supposed to be a 10 year guarantee on these things. Anyway, that's no good to us, so we've bought a new one. It's the 12th of January 2022 and we're back out for a couple of days in the van. Someone asked me why are the videos posted so late and the simple answer to that is because I've given up editing whilst on a trip. I mostly enjoy filming but it's editing where the real workload exists. And if you're going to keep on top of it you have to do that almost every day which can take an awful lot of fun out of a trip. Is it mist or is it smoke? It smells smoke. Like smoke. Yeah. Oh, great. Let's shut this off. The other problem was that uh, if I'm doing all the filming and doing all the editing, well, Carol has to do all the driving and all the cooking because there simply isn't enough time in a day to share it out fairly. So there came a point in our travels when I just thought enough was enough and I made the decision not to do editing on the road. And all I can say is it's absolutely transformed the enjoyment we get out of these trips. So for this trip we're back in Sussex, our home county, and the plan is to stay out for just one or two nights. The weather over the past few weeks has been absolutely miserable and we've been waiting for a patch of blue sky so that we can get away. Because the weather is so unpredictable we've decided to stay local to Sussex and take you to a few more locations and add that on to our Sussex tour series. coming into the village of Amberley where there's an old museum and a lovely spot by the river. Georgian Dragon. We've been in that pub and very nice food and lovely views across the Sussex Downs. We both fancy a bit of breakfast and we know there's a burger van on this road. So we're going to pull in and see if we can get anything. Flags flying. Yeah. It's not looking good, yeah, is it? It's open Front's not open. So, no burger for us, Bunny. No. No, oh, shut up. Twice we've tried to give them our business and they've been shut. Stuff to make do with our own. When you get the inkling for a burger, you have to sort that out. It's just, oh yeah, Burger King. I thought it was just a KFC. But there is Burger King as well. What do you fancy? Um, I'll have a double cheeseburger, please. And a coffee? And a coffee, yeah. Do you get the burgers? Yeah, so this is the white coffee. Okay. This is, they're not in the heat proof cups, but she's doubled them up. Oh, okay. So it should still be right. I've got you some sugar. Thank you. Double cheeseburger. That's not big, is it? Mm. Only a small one. Yummy. Mm. Mm. Delicious. It's full of flavour. It is, isn't it? We're fed and watered, so now we can continue on to our destination, which this morning is Bognor Regis. I think it's a good idea stopping to let someone cross on a uh, roundabout. roundabout. Well, it's the new rules now. If you're entering into a road and there's someone waiting oh to cross, God. you've got to give way. I tell you what, it's a recipe for disaster then because yeah. the transit behind me nearly went right up my backside then. 
would not have been good. That would have been a poor start. Just down the end of this road and we're there. It's playing display. There's plenty of spaces. Yeah, a little cafe. Shame about the big lorry. Look out onto the playing field. Yeah. Oh, nicer mm. aspect, isn't it? Mm. Shadier. We're currently in West Park, Bognor Regis, and we've come for a walk along the beach. We've been enjoying ourselves trying to find a roofer to repair mm. our roof mm. that got damaged in which Storm, Storm Barra. Barra. Mm. And a piece of concrete on the verge fell out. Been a right pain actually trying to find someone, and yeah. they come round, they do their quotes, and um, well, they say they're going to do a quote yeah. and they never get back to you. Yeah. Anyway, I'd be glad when we've got it repaired. Yeah. Get it all I sorted. It there's something wrong with the house. Because mm. it's stopping us going away, really, isn't it? I want to get it finished. Yeah, and then you don't know how long a lead time there is, whether they can do it right away. Or mm. one guy said he couldn't fit you in till February, so mm. we might have to wait a few weeks before we can get it done. Yeah, oh well, got to be done. Mm. Isn't it? The Parliament, that he has not been truthful. Is it tenable to have a sitting Prime Minister to do that? But ultimately, he is not going to Oh, walk, Boris caught with I his pants it, down so. again. Well, I think this is a first for us. It's the first time we've been parked up in the middle of a building site. It's lovely with the sun, isn't it? Yeah, it's so warm as well. Normally on a clear day, it's really cold. Hello. Hello. Hi, yeah. This is a viewer of the channel and he was about to tell us all about something that's really worth seeing on the beach. But unfortunately everything went pear-shaped here and we lost all the sound on all of the clips. We just met a really nice guy called Ian who was telling us all about a section of the Mulberry Harbour which is down on the beach here. And if you're watching this Ian, big apologies mate because none of that footage that I took came out. When we met you we were just having a nightmare with our microphones and this camera and sadly we didn't get it right. Um, and we've had to go back to the van and swap microphones because the ones we had weren't working yeah. so hopefully these ones will be okay now. It's only a short walk from the car park before we get to what we've come to see. <laughs> this is Carol's show jumping. You made it this time. And there it is, laying on the beach. On the shore between Bognor Regis and Aldwick lies the remains of a floating pontoon. Vital to the success of the D-Day invasions, the Allied forces had to create a floating harbour. It was built in sections that could be floated across the channel and then finally sunk into place. Mulberry was the code name for the operation to create it. One of the problems they faced though was how do you conceal such a massive structure from enemy detection? They did it by submerging the various parts under the water along the south coast. This particular section, a beetle pontoon, intended to form part of a roadway 
and it broke free during a storm on the 4th of June 1944. Unfortunately, the section was considered unrecoverable and was abandoned, so it failed to make it across the channel. The storm washed it up onto the beach, where it's lain ever since. They were steps up to where we They're were going. They're not steps, no. So this plaque's a tribute to Lieutenant Walter Pryor, who was killed here while immunising a mine, age 23. Certainly get to see a few storms living here. Yeah. Here lived squadron leader Jefferson Wedgwood. DFC in bar 1917-42. Back the Britain pilot. 253 squadron at Kenley. You'd think they'd put a plaque here, wouldn't you? If they haven't found this plaque, you'd think it'd be fairly close to the actual case on, wouldn't you? Yeah, so I don't know if this is pro belongs to that house or whether this is public. <sighs> we never did find the plaque, so if you do know there is one and where it is, please let us know in the comments. These gardens, it's a shame, isn't it? Because they're sort of falling out of favour yeah, with right. the next generation. Yes. Now. The right. generation before us, I think, have really appreciated well, them. Well, they were big in Victorian times, weren't they? Right yeah. up to the 1950s, 60s. It's a blue plaque on that uh, building over there. Yeah. You like your blue plaques, don't you, Charlie? I do. Let's see what it is. And the sign says these are sensory gardens. They what does must, that mean? Well, must grow a lot of um, highly scented things and things to touch. So William Fletcher, Lord of the Manor of Aldwick, bequeathed land for marine park gardens. Um, so Aldwick, is that that place that's just down there where we were walking Next past? Next little yeah. town down there. Another little plaque here about the clock. Oh. But it's half covered by this boarding. Yeah, put well that's over it. the present clock which doesn't look anything special. No. Well, it looks quite old, that clock, though, doesn't it? Well, it says 1995. Mm. So we want tea. Well, walk along the seafront, walk along the pier, look around the town, cup of tea. Where does this term bugger bogner come from then? Well, George V came here in 1929 to recover from some lung surgery because mm -hmm. they thought it'd be good for his health. And then um, it was requested, because he recovered, that they um, give it the royal title Regis. Oh, right, so yeah. one story is that when he was petitioned to give it the royal title, he said, oh, bugger bug now. Oh, really? That's one story. Don't know if that's true. Yeah. And then the other one is that when he was dying on his deathbed or getting near to dying, um, they thought he should come back here because it had helped him recover previously. And he's meant to have then said, oh, bugger bug now. Yeah, right. But uh, it's always thought that he had little regard for the town, even though it was very good for in his recovering his health. They got some nice modern public loos here. Oh, free. Oh. Some figures here on the hotel. Never noticed them before.
paid and displayed your ticket. Yeah, we have. And we're using a peg these days. Don't know who it was who suggested a peg, but brilliantly simple and very effective. So thanks for that. Just goes like that. We had to come back to the van because of complete cock up today, isn't it? With batteries, forgetting to Just take charging so cables. Experience of doing it. Yeah, I think we're a bit out of practice, yeah, don't you? Out of practice, that's it. So we come back to the van, we put all that right, and we're now going to relocate down to the other side of Bognor mm. and have a walk from the other direction. We're down at the eastern end of the seafront here, right next to Butlins, a large holiday camp that has been here many years. A week's holiday for a week's wages. That was the selling point of this place. Forever I'll live, forever I'll try. That's a slab of cake, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, there's no point hiding it behind <laughs> there. Mm. Chocolate first. Mm. 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 Is that nice? Mm. Chocolatey. Now try your cake, see how that is. It's carrot cake, so it's healthy. Now that's what we call a slice of cake. Isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Is it good? Mm. Mm. Wow. Juicy. Do you want to taste some? I'll try a little bit, mm. yeah. Orangey and carrot. Like orange. Yeah. Not my favourite. Well, after that, we decided to walk it off up the town, having a brief look in the shops. The British High Street is dominated by charity shops these days. Punch and Judy. I like these old buildings where the top juts yeah. out over the bottom. Too righty. Look at that old building there, AD 1899. Wow, yeah. It's pretty. They've got some really nice buildings, haven't they? Yeah, never really realised. This is the yeah. town hall. Looks like it used to be. Yes, it says there, Bob and Regis oh, Town yeah. Hall. Regis There's Town a blue Hall. plaque. Let's go and have a look. Don't get run over. Yeah. Built Charles in 1929. Voicey. 1889 to 1981. Nationally renowned architect. Is that a plaque to King George V? Oh, like you were saying. As I said. Bequeathed yeah. the title of Regis. On, after convalescing here in 1929. Okay, let's get going. Our car park's about to run out, isn't it? By the time we reached the car, it really started to get dark. We have a place in mind that we want to stop this evening, but we're going to use the double move manoeuvre.
So I imagine you're all wondering, what the heck am I talking about? Well, the double move manoeuvre is used when you want to park somewhere where you're not really supposed to be parking. Now we could park up on the left here and probably spend the night with no trouble at all, but I don't like parking on busy roads if I can possibly avoid it. So this is the first leg of the double park manoeuvre. We're going to stay here until it's time to go to where we want to sleep. Okay, so we know it works. I should hope so. How much was it? £16. Mm -hmm. Very cold outside now, so we've got the heater on. Okay, Charlie, what are you cooking? Okay, I'm gonna, we're just going to have um, simple soup and French bread. Lovely. Look at this. Taste the difference from Sainsbury's Jamaican jerk style chicken soup. Right. That'll soon be warmed up. Okay. Are we ready? That's <laughs> thick soup. Nice. Very tasty, Charlie. Yeah, I like this one. It's quite spicy. Yeah. It's got rice in it and like kidney beans and peppers. Mm. Mm. Lovely. Nice. Yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? It's nice and thick. Mm -mm. Thank you. Do you hear that? That's the sound of me forgetting to turn the microphone on. Well, we've had a good time just resting up here, but now we're going to have to get the van Chilly. ship shape because tonight we're going to be doing stealth camping. For those who may be about to hit the keys, telling us it's impossible to be stealthy in a red camper van, just hold on. It's not about hiding the van, it's just about hiding that we're sleeping in the van. All in our sleeping spot, aren't we, Charlie? Hello. Ready to go to bed. I think that's enough for this episode. Yeah. Oh, they're all in wetsuits, aren't they? Hello. So, yeah. But it'd still be cold, wouldn't it? Wait for the sunrise. Join us next time for more adventures from the Little Red Camper.